Good afternoon, Mr. Rigoberto Teglao. Thank you for accommodating our documentary. Good afternoon. Now, on with your works. I've scanned through a few of them before, mm -hmm. and I noted that most of them are in English. Why is that so? First of all, it's in English because it's the main means of communication in our society now. No? By society, I would mean, of course, uh, the ruling elites. No? English is the main uh, form, of, uh, main language now. It's the lingua franca of our uh, nation. And the newspapers, the broadsheets are almost all in English. The ones in Filipino are in are the tabloids. You said that the upper class uses English more than the lower class. So mm. are you saying that we actually look down at our language? You have to look at language not just as a means of communication. But language is both an artifact yeah. of a particular society. It reflects all of the power and economic relations. And language often, you know, almost always, is a product of history. You know? The Spanish colonialists ruled us for four centuries and it was Spanish that they uh, propagated, disseminated. It, uh, they disseminated it among the uh, local elites, which they used to control the country. When the Americans came in, they propagated America, uh, English, uh, American English. In fact, one of the biggest programs of the Americans were to establish these educational institutions, mainly teaching the language. And as in the Spanish period, uh, and during the American period, <clears throat> the elites, of course, learned uh, English as their language. So the shift was from Spanish as the language of the elites to uh, English no? mm -hmm. as the language of the elites. Now, this is all even reflected in uh, Quote unquote, the so, the so called uh, great novels. No? Uh, the main uh, novel in during the Spanish time was Rizal, no? El Philip Busterismo and Olimitangre, which are all in Spanish. No? After the Spanish period, we have Shuni uh, Rose, uh, Nick Joaquin, even Carlos Bolosa, no? mm -hmm. who wrote all in uh, English. If you look at that, uh, if you look at that perspective, Filipino, or our national language, wasn't at all given importance. No? It was relegated to the sidelines. Even when we achieved the independence in 1945, the thinking of the elites were English, American Empire, this is the era of Pax Americana. You want to be part of that uh, uh, empire, that, that uh, dominant culture. So most of the elites studied the uh, English is the means of, uh, of communication. So the Ateneo, I remember that we would even find <coughs> if we spoke a uh, word of Tagalog. Mm. And in most uh, colleges of the elites, it's always English that's used as uh, the language. Now, there were a few hardy souls, few nationalists who, who saw that this would, this situation would uh, damage our culture. No? So they propagated Filipino, but apparently most of these people were academics. No? The main force which uh, tried to propagate uh, Filipino were the Communist Party. No? And they recruited a lot of elites from the school to propagate Filipino. No? So even, for instance, the main works of uh, their publications are mostly in Filipino now. No? But their seminal <laughs> book was also in English. The point there is that uh, we are hostages of our history. Uh, even no matter how much you strive to be nationalist mm -hmm. using the language, you cannot unwind history. You know? There has to be another, perhaps we, uh, some great novelist would uh, emerge you know, to develop the language. Because this, is, this has been the history of most languages, you know? for instance, uh, French, Le, Le Miserable, Russian, Dostoevsky, of course, uh, English literature were all replete you know, with good novels in English. We were never given a chance to progress or develop our language further. Never, no. Not even, uh, and the elites didn't even care. No? Yes. In fact, in the Ateneo, in the 70s, we even 
practically took over the newspaper and to the Jesuits' protest, used Filipino as its, as its means of communication. We took over the literary magazine, uh, Heights turned it into Panday. No? But after three or four years, they reverted back to English. No? Not because they had bad intentions, but uh, precisely because the masses were the ones who were using the language and they weren't, of course, in positions of power. Uh, precision in Filipino wasn't developed at all. Even, even literary-wise, it was the elites who could write, could uh, had the luxury of writing novels, while the masses don't have the time to do this, so very little Filipino literature has been uh, produced. Earlier, you mentioned that you have a column for Manila Times. Manila Times, Manila yes. Times. In, and for Bulgar, that's yes. in Filipino. What do you actually prefer writing in? What language are you able to express yourself more? I'm part of the educational system of the elite, no? which means my very thought processes are in English. No? The first, uh, when I think of concept, it's not in Filipino, no? but in English, which uh, means that, of course, I'm more proficient in expressing my uh, views, expressing complex subjects in English. What's your say on nationalistic journalists who propose completely eradicating the use of English? They're crackpots, no? I don't think they're living the real world now. That if you eliminate English, you uh, propagate a language that hasn't been fully developed right now. Mm -hmm. Unlike certain other countries, for instance, uh, in Greece, every new book, novel, non-fiction, is almost instantly translated into Greek. No? which means their very thought processes are in, the, in their language. No? In our case, try translating, for instance, uh, uh, Heidegger's being, no? or existentialism. It is so difficult. We just don't have the tools for it. In my school, Obi Montessori, mm -hmm. we use English as the medium of teaching. How about not completely eradicating English, but using Filipino as the medium instead of English? As a medium, I think it's been experimented on a lot in public schools now. It's in Filipino. What they produce are people who don't know both English and Filipino. No? I don't know how they, they can do it, but there has to be a, still a way of developing Filipino no? as a precise language. No? Mm -hmm. But you cannot force it at this stage of our development because it's there. And most, of, most of us think in, in English, we don't think in Filipino. We read the most complex subjects in English, not in Filipino. And uh, um, complex subjects aren't translated into Filipino. There was a study conducted um, just recently that the younger generation, even the current generation, is actually failing at the Filipi Filipino subject more than math. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And a lot of their parents are complaining when, in fact, they're the ones to blame because they, mm -hmm. you, because from the very start, they make it a point that they're that their children's mother tongue is English, yeah, right, Filipino. Right. Oh. Isn't, shouldn't it be the other way around since mm -hmm. Filipinos is a little bit more complex? What uh, that, that philosopher, lingui philosopher in English Noam Chomsky referred to as the deep structure of language. Language isn't just a skill like tennis you learn. No? Uh, it, it's not, uh, it's, uh, it's more of uh, they put it learning to play a guitar or a piano. No? Mm -hmm. It is so complex that you cannot learn it logically, which means most humans learn to speak their language between, some of them say, straight from a baby to three years old. That's where they imbibe the structures of language that, that aren't logical. So if a child doesn't learn a particular language between age one and three, it is so difficult for him to learn the new language. No? And this is what's happening in a lot of the new generation of uh, Filipinos now who think wrongly that they're giving their children a lot of advantage by teaching them, uh, by speaking to them every day in English no? rather than in, their, in Filipino. So what's happening now is that you have a schizophrenic generation. 
because uh, the, other than being artifact of uh, society, Philip, your language expresses your deepest emotions, your deepest soul. If you don't learn it, you cannot express your emotions really. With the rate we're going right now, do you think that we still have hope for in, pro in progressing or developing our language? There is, of course, uh, always hope, no? but I hope there are a group of uh, academics no? or even writers you know, who would strive to 